Hey, what's up guys? You got Gypsy back here today bringing you week, uh, I think it's five of the CPC. And uh, this week we're going up against my boy Sebastian, top tier boy. Um, and yeah, we have uh, we actually faced a couple of times this week. So we faced in the MPL and the CPC. And this was earlier on in the week. Um, I do apologize for this going up so late. <laughs> um, I've had a lot going on this week. My girlfriend's actually come over and she's staying with me. Uh, she's staying at my place and we've been, you know, we've been doing stuff uh, in real life and I've had like multiple leaks to, to prep for and stuff. Um, so this is, this is quite late as a result of that, unfortunately, but you know, that such is life. Um, so basically, yeah, at the beginning of the week, like Sebastian's really busy with his uni schedule, with his college schedule over in America, it's pretty hectic. So we, um, we needed to get this match done like ASAP and cause we, we, you know, the CPC is just... It, like we're, we are like taking it seriously in a sense but it's also just for us to have a bit of fun like we're not taking it all that seriously in comparison to something like the NPL. so we uh we just wanted to get this out of the way so we could have the rest of the week to you know prep accordingly for our NPL match so um i didn't really have adequate time i think i built this team in like an hour or so uh the morning that Seb asked me if i was free um and so we, yeah, we just threw a pretty fun team together and um yeah and so here we have the team that Seb brought so Seb's got um He's got so many threats to my team, so um, because my team is so bulky, uh, it really does struggle with this sort of this sort of like hyper offensive archetype that Seb has. He's got the Mega Absol combined with the Garchomp and the Torn, which just pressure my team so well. Um, and he's also got hazard stacking options in Roserade, which is definitely a big issue for my team, as you guys are going to see. So um, we're going to jump into the match, and we'll see what happens. Uh, so I'm going to lead off with my Sylveon, and so I predict him to lead off with this Mega Absol. Just wanting to get that uh, Mega Revolution off, just uh, in case I was like a lead Stun Fisk with Stealth Rocks. Um, he, has, uh, he doesn't actually have Hazard Removal, so him leading with Absol is like his form of Hazard Removal in a sense. So yeah, cool cool plan to part now. Right here, um, I, I make a huge choke turn one. This is going to be a theme of this game. I like I, I choke upon multiple plays. Uh, and this, this first turn, had I gone for a Calm Mind here, um, I am physically defensive with the iron with the steel reducing berry so i would have been able to comfortably take two iron tails even if he's like adamant um in conjunction with the berry um so ha had i gone for a calm mind here on his uh, protect or on his iron tail i would have been in a fantastic position but as you guys are going to see i just uh, play it safe and go for the hyper voice i uh, just you know <laughs> I, I choke, I choke, basically uh, first turn and go for the hyper voice crucial misplay because now he's going to go into his ordino now, had I calm minded up first turn, I could have calm minded up once more and he's predicted switch out. As you guys are going to see, Hyper Voice does 26% to this Ordino, so we're at plus two, it would have been a nice 2 AK on this Ordino. Um, and, you know, I would have I would have Hyper Voice, to be honest, because Seb likes to run Encore on his Ordino, so even if he had like Encore locked me into Hyper Voice, I still would have been at a plus two Sylveon and I would have been able to get at least, uh, I would have been able to kill this Ordino and get at least one more kill on the rest of his team because as I said, I do have the iron reducing, but the steel reducing berry, so even if he wanted to go into something like Cabalion and try and hit me with like a banded iron head, I would have easily been able to tank that with my berry and my defensive investment and get at least two kills with the Sylveon. So that was a very, very uh, costly choke on my part. Um, so we're, we're definitely off to a, a really bad start. I'm going to switch out here and go right out to my uh, Sizzle, as it is a pretty nice switch into this guy. Uh, as he just goes for a Wish, he just fires off a Wish. Now I Mega Revolve here and go for the Baton Pass, predicting the Taunt to come in. Uh, maybe, maybe even the Guard Jump, if you want to go into that. Uh, so now I just go out into my uh, Stun Fisk. I do apologize, I think it's lagging a bit. Um, and Stun Fisk is a pretty nice check to the Taunt. Yeah, so we're back, and uh, yeah, Stunfisk is a pretty nice check to the Tornadoes, and I, I do predict him to switch out here, or maybe even just go for the U-turn, trying to, like, in case I, I do predict him to go out, switch out to Garchomp, and I, you know, switch out to something like Kyurem. Uh, he, he, you know, his plays to U-turn here, or not, because he could get the Static Barrow. So I'm just going to fire off my Stealth Rocks. All right, here. Yeah. Uh, you guys are going to see, uh, he does uh, get parried by the, right there by the U-turn. Uh, sorry, I don't fire Stealth Rocks, I go for Earth Power just in case he wanted to go into his app, so I'll predict my rocks there. Now, I make another massive choke here, and I, I sack with my Stunfisk, which was an, an amazing check to the Cabalion, to the Absol, to the Torn. Uh, I sack it off to an EQ. While it does allow me to scout the Garchomp's like, uh, set, because I can determine that he's a Life Orb variant from the recall damage that you just took then, uh, it, it's, it definitely wasn't worth the trade. <laughs> um, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't, don't make plays like that. Um, you know, I did have a you know pretty pretty decent 
Sibs, which is, uh, I guess, I guess, like, in Sibs' mind, like, I didn't really have answers to an EQ from a life full chomp, so that, that was a fair enough play in his part, like, uh, th there was just no reason for me to stay in there. Um, I don't really have anything in my team to take a hit from a life full chomp, so, yeah, this is what I'm saying about chomp, just, like, destroying my team. Um, I, I, I do have Scarf Kirim to outspeed, but, like, you know, he has the, uh, the little, this fucking fairy thing that he can just switch in, uh, what's it called, or Dino. So that's that's definitely an issue. Um, so I'm just going to go into my physically defensive sleeking right here and just fire off an ice beam uh, as he just switches right out into his Aldino here. So uh, this is this is not good. Uh, I'm just going to switch out. There's no point staying in here uh, with my defensive sleeking. So he's just going to heal Bell up now. Uh, now this is where I, I have a pretty nice opportunity to set up for SD right here on his switch out. He goes into his taunt here. Now this is uh, this is another like this is just the third joke. Um, I made three crucial chokes this game, and this is the third and, and final basic choke. Uh, had I gone for the BP here, um, it was a roll to take him out. It was a relatively low roll, I think it was like 36% to take him out at the at, at max health. Uh, he told me to spread after the game. Um, and even if I hadn't killed him, I, I would have, uh, like say I, I had missed out on the roll, he would have been in range to die from life or recoil. Now, in my head, I was thinking, you know, I need to preserve Mega Pins, Mega Scizor. I need to get this plus two and pass it to Kirin because that is my way of winning. If I do that, then I can win. Um, however, like, I didn't, you know, I didn't realize how important getting rid of Torn was because now that now that Skunt, Stunfisk is down, like, my answers to Torn, like, Sylveon and, and Sloking check it to an extent, but the fact that it's Light Bulb means that, like, it, it can do far more damage than, like, an Assault Vest variant. So, yeah, I, I really, I really checked this. I, I do switch out if you're in the Heat Wave, just not wanting to risk the roll. Had I killed Torn there, you guys are going to see how it would have affected the game later on. Uh, so now I'm just going to bring in my Sylveon here, and I'm just going to, I think I wish up this turn. See, so U turns out and goes right into his Ordino. So I do wish up, and now I'm just going to protect as he goes for the T-Wave just to scatter set. So he's T-Wave, most likely Encore, uh, Heal Bell, Wish. So I'm just going to go into my Drapion right here, and he's going to bring in his Garchomp as I go for the knockoff, removing the Life Orb. So now this, uh, you know, I figured he would go out to his Garchomp, but this means that, um, this means that the Garchomp is easier to check with my Sloking now, because the Life Orb has been removed, so that was pretty nice for me. Uh, but as you can see, it's still doing quite a lot of damage, and, um, you know, it's not the, not the greatest situation to be in. I just have to fire off Ice Beams because I can't risk him going, I can't risk him staying in, like, predicting me to make another try hard play and, like, predict his switch out. Uh, Garchomp is a massive threat to my team. So he comes, uh, he brings in his Cabalion right now. So I'm just going to go for a uh, Psychic as he gets up his Stealth Rocks. It doesn't even do much, and he does 34 because I'm not invested or anything like that. So he fires off a Toxic, and this was, uh, this was pretty crucial. I go for the Ice Beam here, predicting him to switch out to something like his Absol. Uh, and now he is going to make the Absol play on my uh, on my Psychic. Uh, as I do switch out to my Mega Pinsel predicting, I actually rather predicted the uh, Ordino to come back in. Uh, but the fact that he did bring in Absol, uh, he, his Absol set is most likely like, he most likely was packing fire coverage, so I wasn't going to risk it. I just switched right out into my Sylveon, knowing I can pretty much take this thing on, because if it is Fire Blast, it's very unlikely that it's got Iron Tail too. Um, so I do just go for the Wish. As he brings in his... Uh, is Rosa Red, and this is a this is an issue. Like, remember how I said earlier in the game that like had I had I got those two calm lines up, I would have been able to beat this Rosa Red. However, you guys are gonna see. Um, I do switch out here, not wanting to take a sludge bomb, and I go into my uh, sort of answer in uh, the form of Drapion. As now I can just set up my own T spikes. As he switches out to his Garchomp, wanting to get him before T spikes, I suppose. I've already I'd already knocked off his item, so knockoff wasn't gonna be doing much to this guy at all either as he just goes for the EQ here and he can basically uh, 2 hit Gomi uh, if he gets like a high enough roll but he doesn't want to risk it he just goes right into Roserade and eats up the toxic spikes I was going for the dragon tail here like another another kind of dumb play like there wasn't really much point there like I predict him to go out to his Absol uh, right there so had I gone for the dragon tail would have got chip on him but like ice beam was just as safe because like I would have got like whilst dragon tail would have phased him out like ice beam would have done more uh, but that's neither here or there. I'm just going to switch out to attempt to switch out hit to my uh, Sylveon, but he traps me in pursuit. So yeah, my, my, my team is just getting bodied by the combination of Garchomp and Absol, and that uh, that Torn that should be dead. Um, but I'm just going to set up a Calm Mind here as he goes into his uh, Rose Red, and you guys are going to see Sludge Bomb does 50%. So had I set up a plus two earlier on in the game, I would have easily been able to tweak over this Rose Red while taking on uh, you know, a neutral Sludge Bomb from it. 
Uh, so right here, I'm just going to wish protect us here, so it's not spikes on my protect, which is pretty safe because Hyper Voice isn't even going to be doing too much to this thing. Uh, well, it's going to be doing quite a lot because I'm at plus one, but yeah, he was pretty safe to just go for the spike on my protect there. As then when it comes to my Scarf Kirim, I'm just going to go for the safe Dragon Claw. Like, it, it was my play, it was going to kill, it was going to kill uh, Roserade and it would to it carried one if he wants to switch that in. Um, and so... Cabalion goes down, in comes the Torn, and this is what I mean about having got rid of the Torn earlier. Uh, he takes he takes the Dragon Claw pretty easily and knocks off my Scarf, and this is basically GG at this point because now uh, you know I can't outspeed the Chomper, I can't outspeed the Absol, and nothing on my team can take down this Garchomp. You guys are going to see, it's just going to take my uh, my Kirim out right there. I go for the SD here because if I can get if if he misses Fire Blast, which he probably has because he's Life Orb. Um, I can kill him with a BP if I get a, a decent enough roll. And uh, I can then win from there because BP kills Roserade. BP, uh, BP, I can just basically set up all over the Yaldino and BP will kill the Mega Absol. But he, he hits Fire Blast, so that's cool. Uh, so I just forfeit there because like there's no point uh, wasting any more of our time. So there you guys have it, my, my our first loss in the CFA. Um, yeah, my team just got bodied by Life Orb Chomp. And... Uh, and the torn and the absol and that, that was that was really a mistake on my part like it was poor building you know i was, I, I don't want to say i was rushed building because like i could have said no like i could have asked to like postpone the match till i had more time to prep but i didn't so that was on me and um you know i built i built very poorly like i didn't have a, a very good switch into uh to the chomp he had fire blast so like even if i had brought it like a de fully defensive tangrowth then like you know fire blast with life orb chomp is still pretty strong uh, so props to my man Seb, like he, you know, he built really well and he played really well. He took advantage of my, um, of my chokes. Like as I said, I choked. Th those three crucial chokes uh, really set me back and put me in a position to lose. I think, you know, not calm minding up the first two turns set me on the back foot immediately and uh, set me down the path of losing this one. So there you guys have it. You can't win them all, and um, that's just how it goes. Sometimes I'd rather lose to a friend, like Sebastian, than someone else. Uh, that's that's the mentality we all share, so <laughs> that's all good. Uh, I think we're still we're actually still in the top of the league. We've still got the highest differential. Um, having lost that game, that means there are no more undefeated teams in the league, which is um, pretty cool. So uh, we are, yeah, I believe we're still the highest. We still have the highest like differential overall, so we're still like uh, we're still pretty up there. But um, you know, we'll bounce back next week. I promise. Uh, I do apologize to my fans. My fans, you're not my fans, my friends, um, for that that really poor performance on my part. Uh, you know, I, I just wasn't really, I wasn't really focused, and I made all those uh, crucial jokes. So uh, it is what it is. But I promise you, boys, we'll bounce back hard next week, and uh, we'll grab ourselves another six zero because you know we gotta, we gotta, we gotta make a statement out there. So stay tuned for my next week's match. Um, and yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and stay posted for more content. I've got CFA semis coming up. i got uh, more recordings for that to do. I'm, I'm so behind in recordings just because uh, I've had a lot of stuff going on in real life, but I hope you guys can understand and I will be bringing them to you as, as fast as I can. So <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a great day and I will see you next time.